Hey guys and welcome to my full abyss guide for all combat styles for 2019. When you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. AFKing at the Abyss is one of the easiest AFK ways to get combat experience, and it's also a very easy thing to get into. The requirements for the Abyss are listed on screen now. The minimum requirements to train at the Abyss are level 43 plus prayer and level 50 plus combat stats. Yes, it's actually possible to train and almost AFK at the Abyss with low combat stats. More on that later. However, I do recommend you to have 43 plus prayer and 70 plus combat stats for an easier experience. The other requirements are the Abyss mini quest to be complete, which requires the Room Mysteries quest to be complete. Both are very short and easy to complete. And the Blood Amulet of Fury is a requirement if you want to AFK fully. Now all the timestamps to all of the parts in the video will be in the description below. Let's move on to the useful things for the Abyss. Now before you panic, I know this is a big list, but you don't need any of these things. However, the things marked in red will help you substantially. I will try to go over these things real quick. The main thing, however, is the Blood Amulet of Fury, which is made using a Blood Necklace Shard currently costing 9 million GP and a normal Amulet of Fury. This process will require level 80 crafting, which can actually be assisted if you do not have the level. The corruption abilities requiring level 70 ranged and magic can be unlocked by buying a mass cap ability codex currently costing 70 million GP. You don't need this codex or these abilities, but they will increase your experience per hour for ranged and magic. The Scrimshaw of Sacrifice is another expensive but super useful item as it increases your experience by 50% by actually eliminating all the drops you get. However, this will cost you 1.5 mil GP per hour, and the reason it doesn't matter that you're losing the drops is because you're not picking up anything at the Abyss anyways, so you might as well use these. Inventory perks are of course useful, the Vampirism and Penance Auras are of course also useful if you have the loyalty points to spare, especially if you're low level, the Vampirism Aura can come in handy because you get that extra healing, if you have the loyalty points to spare, of course, unlockable abilities from quests are useful, like Ice Asylum if you're low level for that extra bit of healing, and Death Swiftness and Sunshine, of course, from the World's Wakes quest. The Charming Imp is useful to collect or crush charms for summoning experience. The new Totem of the Abyss from the Land Out of Time update can give you an easy teleport to the Abyss. Cinder Banes are, of course, good, and Weapon Poison for extra poison damage. The Enhanced Excalibur is useful for free healing. Any type of cannon can help you out, but they're not really worth using here as they're expensive, healing familiars can help, and the OP decimation two-handed bow here is very good because it has an AoE special attack and you can get up to 1 million experience per hour using a scrimshaw sacrifice in conjunction with this. Anyways, let's move on. This is something I want to address, the Abyss lore. Now this is something that may happen when you're AFKing or training at the Abyss. Someone will ask you for your world. They usually offer to buy your world for 10 million GP or whatever price. They usually also crash you while doing this to make you more obliged or feel more obliged to actually let them buy your world. Now because in the Abyss you're in combat, he will ask you to come to Edgeville to trade. But once you go there and actually teleport out, he will log out. What most people do then at that point is wonder why that happened and then just go back to training, aka running back to the abyss, going through the wilderness. But then a friend of the actual lurer is waiting, which is a PKer, and you're going to lose your items if you're not good at tanking, which most people will because it will be unexpected. How do you avoid this lure? Simple. Add that crasher lure to your ignore list and keep on AFKing training. Basically, just ignore them. Never leave your spot or teleport out for anyone. Just a precaution, I don't want you guys to get lured. Now let's move on. So, how do you actually get to the Abyss? Well, it's pretty simple. It's just across the Wilderness Ditch, close to the Grand Exchange and the Edgeville Bank. Check for BKs before crossing the ditch in case there are any waiting already. Now, just because you can't see an actual PKer from the ditch doesn't mean there isn't one waiting deeper in the wilderness to teleblock and stun you. This is why once you cross the ditch halfway through when walking to the Zamorak Wizard to teleport, you want to use the Anticipation ability to not get stunned if you indeed do end up getting attacked. And always pray magic just in case. Once you have teleported, you are safe inside the Abyss. 
If you do end up seeing a PK early on, I recommend hopping a world, turning off your PM and leaving your clan chat channel temporarily just because they might be going inside and guessing to see what world you are. Then hop one more time and then proceed by running towards the Zamrak wizard, but again, be cautious because you do not want to lose your items. Here's a clip of me running to the abyss. I cross the wilderness ditch, I pray magic and halfway through I use the anticipation ability. I then right click the Zamrak wizard and choose teleport. You are now safely inside the abyss. Don't worry about the skull because it will leave in just 5 minutes or so. Now inside the abyss there's actually two training spots per world. There's one on the west and east side. I personally think this spot is better and it's easier to get into because the other spot actually has a few different standing positions while this spot only has one. As you guys can see, you just want to stand in this area and you just AFK away. The other spot has a few different standing positions. You can take this spot or stand against the wall if you want to take less damage. That's actually easier if you're lower level as well. Now because the abyss is a very crowded training area, you may have to hop worlds. You can actually do this inside the abyss without going outside. There are two hop spots in the abyss. There's one here and there's one over here. Now you will sometimes have to kill one abyssal walker or creature before you can actually hop because sometimes they do aggro on you but most of the time you have enough time to hop before one attacks you. What I personally recommend you do for quick hopping is actually turning off the confirmation message in your settings. This way you can just left click to hop to a world instantly. Now when training in the abyss, every 10 minutes the monsters will stop attacking you. To reset the aggression what you have to do is run around the ring until they re-attack you and then you can move back to your training spot. Now let's move on to the gear setups for abyss training. Again if you want to skip to any part of the video, check the description below for timestamps. Now this inventory setup is universal or for all combat styles except for the stat boosting potions them being for a different style. For your inventory it's really straightforward you want to bring along extra food especially if you're a lower level. If you're a higher level player you can just fill your entire inventory with stat boosting potions. The enhanced Excalibur is useful for extra healing without the cost of food and of course prayer potions should be brought along if you're a lower level player or struggling to survive so that you can actually pray melee as this can let you last so much longer at the abyss. Now all the information you need is on screen so now let's go ahead and get into the gear setups, shall we? If you have around level 50 combat stats you can actually train the abyss quite easily using melee and magic. I personally I personally advise against using ranged at a low level because it's very expensive to do. However, it's an option but I'm not going to be including it in this guide. I will include a ranged setup for a mid to high level player however later on in the video. So, for the low level setups, for melee you want a rune armor set and a rune halberd for the extra attack range. If you can afford it, a blood fury will save you a lot of food and extend your trips here. The same goes for the magic setup, except here you're using a mystic air staff requiring level 4 magic with unlimited air runes and of course a full set of mystic armor being pretty cheap. Now the action bars you see on screen are perfectly adapted to abilities around your level. If you don't have some of these abilities you might as well just put them on your action bar until you unlock them because most of them are around level 50. These of course do not include abilities like corruption shots or the quest unlockable abilities because you will probably not have access to these at such a low level. Now I know you can train at the abyss at a low level and it's still better experience than anything else you can do because I've done so with many of my alt accounts. Now you may think it's hard and you need to bank often for food but yes that is something you'll have to do but if you're praying melee at all times you can easily level up your stats here and the higher your stats become and the abyss is really damn fast the easier time you'll have AFKing here or training here. So the first few chips will be absolutely awful and you'll have to eat a lot but once you level up more it will get easier and easier. And then you can use some of the higher level setups in this video which we are going to be covering right now. Let's go.
So first up, we have the mid and high level gear setup for melee. Now this is a base build you can look at. You can of course build on this build if you have better gear, but this is pretty much a baseline for consistent and good experience. The action bar and gears on screen. The gear is actually a full set of Bandos armor using a skill cape. You can of course also use a fire cape or any other good cape you have. A blood fury of course for healing. If you do not have this item, you will not be able to AFK at the higher defense levels. That's the thing. The weapon is actually the Masuda's War Spear, which isn't too expensive and one of the best halberd type weapons in the game. You can of course also use a Crystal Halberd or a Dragon Rider Lance if you wish to. But the Masuda's War Spear is great and as of right now it only costs around 5 million GP. As for your armor, you want to focus on non-degradable armor like the Anima Core of Saros and Bandos. I highly suggest against using armor like Torva here if you're a high level player watching this video, just because you're going to be wasting your money. Alternatively, a cheap tank armor alternative would be Bainite or Necronium armor. By the way, if you're wondering for an inventory setup, check the description below for the timestamps. Now with melee, from the low levels you can expect 250k experience per hour using Rune Halberd. If you have 70 plus combat stats, that should easily go up to 350 to 400k. And if you have high combat stats, aka 90 plus, and you're using a higher tier weapon like the Masuda's War Spear instead of a Crystal Halberd, you should be able to get 600k experience per hour. And it's fully AFK and cheap, so that's amazing. For the magic setup, it's pretty similar compared to the melee setup and the base build is using subjugation armor, a blood amulet of fury, a berserker ring, and a crystal staff. Of course, if you have a better cape than the obsidian cape, please use it, and the same goes for the staff. However, the armor of the battle staff is probably your best option in the abyss as it gives you unlimited air runes and it's a tier 77 staff. Now unlimited air runes are very nice here because you're going to be using air surge or air wave all the time depending on your magic level as the damage of your spell actually caps to your weapon. Now we're not legacy bloodbursting here, we're using corruption blast and with the corruption blast ability you will get an amazing experience rate. I personally recommend against using a noxious staff here because it's just a waste of money because the repair costs are going to be extremely expensive. Without the corruption ability, you should be able to get 300k magic experience per hour here. However, using the corruption blast ability, you're able to get 450 to 555k experience per hour in magic. And in case you're training invention at the same time, you should be able to level up a weapon to level 10 in around 100 minutes, or 1 hour and 40 minutes. Next up is the chinning range setup. Now there's actually a cheaper way of chaining here than chaining because as we may already know, chaining is very expensive. However, chaining is the fastest way to train at the Abyss. For your main hand weapon you want either red or grey chinchompas, but I recommend going with grey chinchompas because they are so, so much cheaper and they will not lack experience per hour that much. As for your offhand, use the best offhand you have. I recommend using a crystal chakram though because it's a very cheap offhand. And other than that, the chinning setup is pretty straightforward, just your non-degradable armor, your chins in your main hand, and your offhand weapon. Just be sure to bring the correct ammo for your offhand weapon in case you're using a Carol's pistol or something, which uses bolt racks. Now for those of you that don't know what chinning is, if you're using chins as your main hand weapon, all of your abilities will now be AoE hits. Meaning if you use any ability, for example binding shot, it will actually target multiple targets which is amazing for experience per hour. So yeah, if you're using that exact bar, you're going to be getting a ton of experience gains. And again, remember, if you're using a scrimshaw of sacrifice, you are able to get 50% more than the actual experience rate that's on screen now. If you're very low level, you can gain around 300k experience per hour at the abyss. If you have the corruption ability and you're using chinchompas, you can get up to 650 and even 700k experience per hour in ranged. That's insanely high, however, the cost will be a bit high as well as you're using chinchompas. You use around 700 per hour, I believe, if you're fully AFK. If you're not AFK, you of course use less, but it's going to cost you money and in the long run it will be expensive. However, if it's just for level 99 ranged and not 120, you should be fine. And the cost should still be a lot lower than skills like Prayer or Herb Lore. And here's the cheaper way of training ranged at the Abyss using a two-handed bow and the Corruption Shot ability. This will in the long run, especially for something like 120, save you a lot of money on chins. However, it is of course slower. 
The Decimation Bow is actually the best weapon to use here as it has a special ability which makes all your attacks AoE attacks, much like Chinchompas for a few seconds. I recommend using this bow over any other bow if you're not AFKing, however if you're AFKing it doesn't really matter. You should be able to get around 400k experience per hour at a high range level using something like a Zarat Bow or Royal Crossbow which are both 280. If you're a lower level in ranged you will get a bit less experience per hour in ranged but with a crystal bow or something you should be fine. If you're wondering what the first ability on the action bar is, it's Death Swiftness unlocked from the World's Wakes quest. If you're level 70 ranged and defense, and you're using a black salamander or crystal bow, both being tier 70 ranged weapons, you are able to get 300k experience per hour here. This goes up to 450k experience per hour at the higher levels, fully AFK. Now if you're using the decimation two-handed bow and you're using the AoE ability as often as you can, you can actually get the same experience rate as Chinchompas being around 650 to 700k ranged experience per hour. However, this will not be AFK and the decimation is currently not a cheap bow. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, drop them down in the comments below. I'll actually leave a link to a variety of useful videos for you guys to check out if you don't understand everything I mentioned in this guide, like the unlockable abilities or how to get the enhanced Excalibur and stuff like that. And with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this guide because this is the end of my full Abyss guide. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like down below as it took me quite a lot of effort to create this guide. If you want more guides, just hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified of any new videos that I will drop. If you want some RuneScape mini guides, I also have a second channel you can subscribe to if you are interested, which I'll leave in the description below as well. Catch you guys later. Peace.